family members that have served our country in the on in the armed forces raise your hands i see many hands being raised how many of you have actually served our country by being in the armed forces will you please stand up will you please stand up i see brother joe nelms brother joe houseman brother Richard up there, Switzer, Miller, Miss Marcus' son. Yeah, dear brother here, I can't remember his name. Wheeler. I also served in the Air Force. You know, one of the things that, of course, as you enlist or com are commissioned in the armed forces, you never know what's going to happen. You may, may have a seat. You never know what's going to happen. I remember being in the Air Force that we will have periodic drills, war games. And in one or two occasions, they made us go through the line as though we were going to be shipped out. They always want you to be ready. They always want you to be prepared for whatever may come. And of course, we may have very well uh, given our lives if they have called us into harm's way. So I commend all of you men that have given of your time to serve our country. As I was watching that video, of course, many, uh, many people were depicted there that have given their lives. You see their relatives uh, mourning for their passing. And I, I saw a few of those videos until I chose that one. But one of them that I looked at uh, earlier had the phrase on it that, that said, freedom is not free. Freedom is not free. Uh, somebody has to pay a price for us to enjoy freedom. And I want you, as we have, as we have uh, spoken about individuals in our country, I want you to think about the ultimate sacrifice that was made for mankind and that was when Jesus Christ himself God in the flesh when he gave his life a ransom for our sins so that we could experience freedom in Christ you see God is all about freedom and liberty he wants, or he came, to set the captives free. People that were in bondage to sin, in condemnation, having been born into Adam's race, as we saw last week. He came to liberate us from that condemnation, to transfer us over to his family so we can experience life in Christ. As he was about to experience that crucifixion, he came with his disciples to celebrate one last time the Passover feast. Of course, the Passover feast was a memorial that God implemented for the nation of Israel to never forget how he took them out from bondage there in that place. You see, God is big when it comes to this thing about memorials. God is big about that. He wants us to remember certain things that he has done for us. As he created the universe, we see in the book of Genesis that God created everything that we see all around us. We did not create ourselves. God created us. We see that in that week, uh, in six days, God made everything that we see all around us. And on the seventh day, he rested. And he blessed that day. And ever since that time, that seventh day has been a time of memorial. It's a time that we should set aside in our lives to honor and reverence the Creator, God Almighty. You see, today we, we meet in this place. This is Sunday. It's not a Sabbath. 
We, why do we meet on Sundays instead of the Sabbath day? Well, we meet on Sundays because we want to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we gather together every week on Sundays, that's what we are doing. We are remembering how Jesus Christ came back from the dead. You know, Jesus Christ is not dead today. He is alive forevermore. But then we see, let's go to Luke chapter number 22, beginning with verse number 13. It says, And they went and found as he has said unto them. And they made ready the Passover. The Passover, of course, was that meal that God implemented for the Jewish people to help them remember how he had, with a strong and mighty arm, liberated them from the bondage of Egypt. And every year since then, the Jewish people has celebrated this special feast to help them remember how once they were slaves in Egypt, but how God liberated them from that bondage. So he, he wanted to enjoy that feast for the last time with them. But then as he went on, he implemented another memorial that he wanted them to partake of. Let's read here. Verse 14 says, And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. You see, he knew that that agony was coming, the agony of death. For I, for I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take these and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. So one other thing that we do when we celebrate the Lord's Supper is that we remember that Jesus promised, I will come back again and take you with myself. Jesus Christ is coming back. Verse 19 says, And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Now we do know that when Jesus Christ was holding up that bread, he was holding that bread with his hand. He said, this is my body. Now, some people, and I met one of them last week, some people will have us believe that that bread actually becomes the actual, literal body of Christ. But that is not so. That is not so. That bread is only a symbol a representation of the body of Christ. He wanted us to remember how he gave his own self for us. He doesn't want us to forget. You see, we, we are forgetful people. Uh, we forget. And he wanted us from time to time. He did not give a particular time or how often to do this. But he said, as often as you do it, this is the process you should follow. And, and the whole thing behind it was to remember the sacrifice that he made for us. So he blessed it, he gave it to them, and they ate it. Verse 20 says, Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is, which is shed for you. And when we partake of that juice, 
that juice is a symbol, a representation of the blood of Jesus Christ. So this is a very solemn occasion that we are partaking of today. We are remembering how for us to enjoy that freedom from sin, he have to pay the ultimate sacrifice. He had to give his own self as payment for our sins. So in a moment, when we pass out these plates and you partake of this, these things that we are giving to you, I want you to think back, think back to that time when you trusted in the Lord as your Savior. Think back to that time and, and express to Him your gratitude that you do not take it for granted. Express to Him how much you love and appreciate what He has done for you. Now in a moment, we're going to take some time to prepare ourselves to receive these things. I know in the book of 1 Corinthians, the Bible says that some people in that church, they, part they partook of this memorial unworthily. And the Bible says that some of them even died because of it. Some of them were afflicted, they were sick because of it. You see, God wants us to have a clean, a clean relationship, a clean mind, a clean heart as we come before him and we celebrate this very solemn occasion. So in a moment, I'm going to call the deacons to come forward and we're going to pass out this to you. I'll tell you what, as I reflect upon this, I think about my own self, and I told you this before, uh, how the Lord changed my life. I was 14 years old, and the Holy Spirit had been working in my life. And He's had been pounding on me, telling me, what are you going to do about Jesus? Are you going to accept what He has done for you? Or are you going to keep going your own way? You see, and he had been pounding on me for some time. But that night, before I went to bed, I said, I had enough. I had enough. I did not want to gamble with my soul. And that night, I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. And I ask Him to become my Savior. I said, God, I want you to forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I accept what you have done for me. Please come into my life. You know, Jesus Christ wants to be master of your life. Master. He wants to be your leader. He wants to be in charge of your life. But he wants us to just do that willingly. So that night, I trusted him as my savior. And from that point forward, I have learned to surrender more and more and more of my life to him. And what I'm learning as I continue down this road is that the more that I surrender to him, the better it is for me. The more joy and satisfaction that I enjoy as a believer. When we try to struggle against Him, when we try to continue to have control ourselves, then we experience a disconnect from God in that particular area of your life. He wants to be in complete control of your life. So I challenge you today, if the Lord has been impressing upon you a particular area of your life that he's been wanting you to surrender to him, 
Why not do so today? Surrender to him that area of your life that you're struggling with. Ask him to help you to overcome it. Ask him to help you to trust him more and more. At this time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask Kevin to come up here and play on the piano. I want you to prepare yourself. Is there a, a sin in your life that is holding you back, that is a snare in your life, and you want to just go ahead and turn that over to God? Is there an unconfessed sin in your life? You need to get clear between you and God today. If so, please take some time right now to take care of that. You don't have to come up to the altar. You can do that in your own seat, but you might prefer to come up to the altar to take care of that particular matter between you and God. So this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask the deacons to come forward to the front here. And I'm going to let Kevin play through that two more times. Give us two more stances. And that will give us all time to reflect and prepare ourselves to partake of the Lord's Supper. <laughs> 